In 1529, the Ottomans dared to attack the metropolis of the Habsburgs for the first time. Islam would rule any territories the Ottomans could conquer. Step by step, they expanded their sphere of control and advanced into Europe. Since the mid 14th century, numerous territories in the Christian Balkans had come under Ottoman influence. The Ottomans continued to expand, making inroads into Europe. They occupied most of the Balkans, as well as Hungary. Eventually, Islam's greatest power crossed the borders of the Holy Roman Empire of the German nation. The conquest of Vienna, one of the main capitals of Christian Europe, would have had a huge symbolic significance. In many cities of the empire, church bells rang out on a daily basis to warn people of the Turkish threat. There were regular sermons against the Turks, the so-called Antichrist. Even Martin Luther was railing against the perceived Antichrist. He described the Turks as the enemies of all Christians. They were servants of the devil, who was trying to topple the kingdom of Christ. Luther encouraged his fellow Germans to strike against the Turks without remorse. Sultan Suleiman the Magnificent was singled out as the arch enemy of the Christian faith. His troops launched the attack on Vienna in the autumn of 1529. It seemed to be a matter of time until the city fell into Ottoman hands. The people of Vienna prayed for a miracle and their prayers seemed to be heard. There was snowfall at the beginning of October. The early advent of winter saved the city. Suleiman was forced to call off the siege. But only one generation later, the Ottoman Turks again mobilized against the weakened Holy Roman Empire. Vienna was the gateway to Central Europe. If the city fell to the Ottomans, Europe would be open all the way to the River Rhine. The attackers decide to charge the city walls in an attempt to break through the Viennese line of defense. Both Christian and Muslim soldiers are convinced that God is on their side. It's their motivation as they enter battle. Starnberg is forced to deploy all his forces to defend the city walls. The Janissaries, elite Turkish troops, are greatly feared. They were recruited as children. Born into Christian families in the Balkans, they were forced to convert to Islam. Now, they are the most loyal troops of the Turkish sultans. but even they are unable to break through the defenses. The ambitious commander of the Turkish army, Grand Vizier Kara Mustafa Pasha. He wants to be immortalized through the conquest of Vienna. Karl Mustafa's troops are confident of victory. The Turkish artillery is wearing down the Viennese defenses. Soon, the walls will be annihilated. Karl Mustafa has powerful cannons and 200,000 soldiers. The Turks also put their faith in the banners of the Prophet Muhammad. Allah will lead them to victory. Vienna must be conquered before the summer is over. 
Otherwise, the weather will force the Turks to retreat. For now, the city walls remain intact. You need more than just cannons to capture the Golden Apple, as the Turks call Vienna. To take the city, Karl Mustafa orders the use of underground mines. For weeks, the Viennese have been holding out against a Turkish siege army. The defender's commander, Count von Starnberg, he knows he has to hold the line at all cost. If Vienna falls, the gates to Christian Europe are open to a Muslim invasion. The relentless bombardment is taking its toll. The city walls are starting to crack, as is the morale of the defenders. The Viennese are taking heavy losses, with no relief in sight. They're urged to strengthen their resolve. The city is completely cut off from the outside world. If it wasn't for its strong fortifications, Vienna would have fallen long ago. The fortifications of Vienna had been repaired and reinforced after the siege of 1529. The walls are stronger, and they have been staggered and angled to withstand the artillery of an attacker. Vienna is protected by a clever system of walls, moats, and bastions. Constructed in accordance with strict geometrical rules, the star-shaped city walls has no blind spots. The defending troops can easily fire at the approaching attackers. There's only one way to overcome the defensive fortifications. The Ottomans have started to dig tunnels underneath the city walls. Ottoman miners dig tunnels towards the foundations of the Viennese walls. They intend to deposit barrels of gunpowder in underground chambers and blow them up. The Viennese are aware of the danger. They establish listening posts in the cellars near the city wall to discover where the tunnels are being dug. Working frantically, the defenders dig tunnels of their own to detect the enemy's gunpowder chambers. It's a race against time. Just in time, the Viennese prevent the Ottomans from igniting a huge mine. The city averts catastrophe. It's a close call. Massive explosions create the first breach in the walls. It's time to order the attack. In the nick of time, the defenders are able to protect the breach. If the Ottomans can take the gap in the wall, the city will fall. Every inch is fought over, no holds barred. Kara Mustafa is confident of victory. He is sure that Vienna, the golden apple, will fall within a day. For nearly eight weeks, the Viennese have withstood every attack, but they are running short of ammunition and food. They have suffered tremendous losses and are exhausted. Vienna is lost unless a Christian alliance comes to its aid. Starenberg puts his hopes in the emperor the Alliance, and in God. Surely their Christian brothers won't desert them. The Holy League is an alliance between the Habsburgs and rulers of the Holy Roman Empire, who were allied to Poland and Venice. Without help from the Christian Alliance, Vienna will be lost. 
Starenberg sends a messenger to the Alliance's commander. It's a desperate and final appeal to Vienna's Christian allies. The Viennese have one last hope. They've been promised help from a relief army of the Alliance. But will it arrive in time? The messenger from Vienna reaches the Allies. Seid ihr der Herzog von Lothringen? Ja, bitte, was gibt's denn? Eure Exzellenz, ich habe eine dringende Nachricht für den Oberst. The Holy League has its headquarters on a hill near Vienna. They are the only ones who can save the city from the Turks. The Alliance is led by the King of Poland, Jan Sobieski. In response to a request by the Pope, he's agreed to support the Habsburgs against the Ottoman threat. Sobieski understands the gravity of the situation. If the Turks take Vienna, they will push further into Europe. He orders to attack the Turks on the following day. What will be achieved in Vienna will benefit the whole of Christendom. The decisive battle is about to begin. It is billed as a fight between Christians and the Antichrist. When the Viennese see the signal fires, they believe it to be a sign of salvation. They give thanks to the Virgin Mary and to the Emperor. During a special field service, the Christian Alliance prepares its troops for the decisive battle. You have been sanctified for a holy war. The Ottoman warriors also pray for God's help before going into battle. They too receive religious blessings. Both sides believe that God is on their side. Time is of the essence. Led by the King of Poland, the Alliance attacks the Turkish positions on the Kallenberg Hill outside Vienna in the morning of the 12th of September, 1683. It will go down in history as the Battle of Vienna. The Viennese are witnesses as the Polish cavalry surprises the siege army. The Turks don't expect an attack. Confident of victory, they told the emperor in Vienna that they would crush his country under their horseshoes. When the armored cavalry suddenly appears at the Ottoman camp, they meet with little resistance. Even the bodyguards of the Grand Vizier are surprised. They fight against the attackers, but can't avoid defeat. As all seems lost, Kara Mustafa seeks death on the battlefield. Whoever is martyred in a holy war gains entry into paradise. But without his leadership, the Turkish army will perish. Ob ich vor Allah Gnade finden werde? At the last possible moment, Kara Mustafa decides to flee. The Ottoman army barely avoids total annihilation. The Grand Vizier escapes with the banner of the Prophet. He will later be executed for losing the battle. From the point of view of the victors, Western civilization has triumphed over the usurpers from the Middle East. The defeat at Vienna is a turning point. The Turks lose Hungary. Gradually, they also lose ground in the Balkans. After 1683, the Ottoman Empire increasingly falls behind the Europeans. <laughs> 